Hello students, welcome back. We will continue with coordinate geometry. In the previous class, I gave you an introduction to what exactly coordinate geometry is and why are we learning it. But let us now take a look at the formal introduction. So before I write that for you on the board, I'd like to mention the definition to you. So coordinate geometry is what? Coordinate geometry is a system, just like we had a number system where we learned everything about number classification. Similarly, coordinate geometry is a system that uses points called coordinates that are used to determine the position of a particular point or a geometric element. Okay, so I will now write down the definition for you and I will erase the board quickly. So just write down uh, that with me in your notebooks and then we will continue with exercise 3.1 of page 53. Okay. So definition. Coordinate geometry is a system that uses points called coordinates so I am underlining coordinates to determine the position of a point or any geometric element. So now you will see that how we use this definition to solve our exercise 3.1. Please take a look. Okay, so shall we get started with exercise 3.1? Let's read out our first question. How will you describe the position of a table lamp on your study table to another person? So this example is similar to the one that I gave you in my second example where you had to find the location of a point with respect to a paper. So where the point was placed on your paper. Similarly, now what we'll say is, let's say instead of the paper, this is your table. So doesn't look like a perfect table. This is your study table. I'm not drawing the legs of the table because the uh, lamp is going to be placed on the table, not anywhere close to the legs, right? So this is the upward uh, place where you keep your books and you study and you have various other elements uh, like your pens and your, let's say, uh, your pencil stand or pen stand and your table lamp if you want to study in the night. So let's say this is my table. All right. and my lamp is placed here so I want to locate the position of this lamp with respect to some person so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a perpendicular suppose this is the center okay so now I'm just removing this table lamp and drawing the center of it suppose this is my table lamp I'm going to draw a perpendicular line over here and a perpendicular line over here, right? I will name my table A, B, C and D and this is my table, table lamp T. So now this perpendicular distance, let's say it is X and this is Y. So the position of this table lamp with respect to any person, whether it is here, whether the person is here or here will be given by X comma Y. So this is known as the attribute pair, new term attribute pair, attribute, attribute pair means nothing but the location or the coordinate points for a particular element with respect to any edges or with respect to any other element. So let us say if this was 3 units, the x was 3 units and y was equal to 8 units. So, the position of my table lamp would be 3 comma 8, alright. So this is a pretty simple sum, should we proceed to the second one? Ok, 
okay a uh, very long how many lines so many lines we'll read it one by one and try to understand this long sum looks long but is very simple okay so this is about a street plan this is going to be similar to uh, something similar to what we learned as the first example where we had streets and house numbers for your friend to look at you or for you to look at your friend so let us read this question looks pretty big but it's very simple a city has two main roads which cross each other at the center of the city so the city is having two main roads let's say one road is my right hand and one road is my left hand so they are crossing each other now this could be a perpendicular cr crossing or it could be like this or like this so these two roads are along the north south and east west direction so let us understand what is north south and east west now usually our maps are represented using this notation i'm sure most of you must have noticed it so this is what this signifies north this signifies south this signifies east and this signifies west so these are nothing but directions so now these roads are along the north south and east west direction what you need to know about the north south and east west direction is that these directions intersect each other at perpendicular angles that is at 90 degrees so let's say i have my two roads and obviously they are going to intersect each other at right angles one is in the north south direction and one is in the east west direction these roads could also be like this but for simplicity i am just saying that my road looks my these two roads look like this i will call this point of intersection as o and i will call this street as x and my this street as y right or my road as x and my uh, vertical road that is the one along the north south direction as y so these are the two roads there are um, now all other streets of the city run parallel to these roads so there are many other streets in the city that are running parallel to these roads so we'll have uh, roads like this or streets like this which are parallel to my street y and there will also be streets like this horizontal that are parallel to my x road my street number x there are five such streets in each direction so let me draw five such streets so this would be street number 1 street number 2 street number 3 street number 4 and street number 5 this is parallel all these streets these five streets 1 2 3 4 5 they are parallel to my street y and there are five streets here as well so street 1 street 2 street 3 street 4 and street 5 so i'll just name these streets as first of all we are going from east to west so street 1 street 2 street 3 street 4 and street 5 similarly i have uh, no i'll go from your itself street 1 street 2 street 3 street 4 and street 5 similarly street 1 street 2 street 3 street 4 and street 5 now all these roads are intersecting each other at perpendicular angles so any angle is perpendicular this is perpendicular this is perpendicular this is perpendicular all the angles are perpendicular now let us read further using 1 cm is equal to 200 m draw a model of the city in your notebook so we have already drawn the model but what you need to understand over here just hang on the street looks really tilted and not at right angle so i'll just draw it better looks like right angle now so each distance this distance is going to be 1 cm all of these blocks are going to be equi distance from each other so what they telling you is this you going to take 1 cm in your textbook okay so each of this is 1 cm 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 in your notebooks but in actual obviously in your city if you are actually taking a city into consideration let's say mumbai or delhi 
do you think uh, the streets are going to be just one centimeter apart? Uh, so one centimeter is as tiny as this. So obviously the streets are going to be huge. So in actual life, one centimeter on your notebooks represents 200 meters. Okay, so this is actually 200 meters. This is another 200 meters. So from O to S2 is 400 meters. From O to S3 is another 200. So this is going to be 200 plus 200 plus 200, 600. Similarly, 200, 400, 600, 800 and 1000 meters. Right? So we have now drawn this uh, diagram that they have asked us to do. Represent the uh, roads streets by using single lines which is what we have done we have represented each of the streets using single lines now let us read further there are many cross streets in your model of course you can see that there are many cross streets in my model a particular cross street is made by two streets so what is a cross street remember I told you that when you have cross streets uh, it's going to be something like this or this but here it is like this that means each angle is perpendicular so let's say you this is a road okay and while you uh, and there are cars moving in both the directions so if i want to cross the road the road is like this and i am crossing it right so i am going perpendicular to it so i'm crossing the road similarly if you say u r y and o x is my road so if you cross it like this you're going to walk this way to cross to reach this point let's say i'm calling this point q so you will walk across OX to reach point Q. So let's say now this is not you as a person. This is one street and this is another uh, road okay, or another street. So they are crossing each other. So this that is why they are known as cross streets because they are intersecting each other at a particular point. So here if you see my street X and street Y are intersecting at point O. Similarly, other streets are also intersecting each other. Okay. Mm. One running in the north-south direction, another running in the east-west direction. So you see that one is running in the north-south direction and the others are running in the east-west uh, east direction. Each cross street is referred to, the for, uh, referred to in the following manner. So now they have given us a notation to uh, name the cross streets. Let us see what it is. If the second street running in the north-south direction. So which is my second street running in the north-south direction? Uh, hang on, uh, running in the north-south direction. So this is my second street running in the north-south direction. Right, so I am just highlighting this street. Let me look for a colored chalk. So this is my second street running in the north-south direction. Correct? And fifth in the east-west. So fifth in the east-west. I will use another chalk. So which is my fifth street in the east-west direction? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is my fifth street that is running in the east-west direction. So you see that this is intersecting at a point. So how are they noting, uh, denoting this point? If the second street running in the north-south direction and the fifth in the east-west direction meet at some crossing, then we call this street 2, 5. So they are calling this street, this cross street as 2,5 right so that means they are taking the notation of your uh, north-south first and the east-west as the second parameter so here the first parameter let me write it down so it's going the first parameter is north-south and the other one is east-west correct let us read further using this convention find how many cross streets can be referred to as 4 comma 3 so let us first find where is 4 comma 3 so my 4 the first parameter is north south so 1 2 3 4 this is my fourth street and 3 so the third street is going to be this one this cross street is 4 comma 3 can you locate any other 4 comma 3 obviously you will say that we have another combination that this is 4 and this is 3 but that is not 4 comma 3 because according to the notation we have north south and east west so obviously only one unique point will represent this cross street so how many cross streets can be referred to as 4 comma 3 
only a unique cross street. Let us look at the other one. How many cross streets can be referred to as 3 comma 4? So, let us locate 3 comma 4. So, 3 comma 4, the first one you have to take is north south. So, 3 for 3 comma 4, this is going to be, 3 is going to be north south. So, north south is going to be this one, 3 and this one is east west, right. So, which is my fourth one? This is my fourth one. So, this point is 3 comma 4. So, again only one unique cross street can be represented by this attribute 3 comma 4. So, again the answer for this is the same. Only one unique cross street. So, we have solved example number 2. We will take a look at Cartesian coordinate system in our next class. Thank you. Hope this video increased your knowledge. For more such videos and a completely free educational content, log on to www.epartshala.org or visit our Epartshala YouTube channel. We have each and every question solved for maths, physics, chemistry and biology. So subscribe our channel, share with your friends, like our Facebook page and follow our Twitter handle for regular updates and important educational tips and also win Epartshala goodies. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe this channel and enjoy the freedom of education.